You're watching KPVM News 46. Weekend Review. With Deanna O'Donnell. And Jason Koblenz. Welcome to News 46's Week in Review, your number one source for local news. I'm Deanna O'Donnell. And I'm Jason Koblenz. A 44-year-old driver of a tanker truck perished as a result of a single vehicle accident this last Tuesday on Highway 160 in the town of Johnny. The driver apparently lost control of his rig around a bend in the road. The enormous tanker crashed through a guardrail and careened into a ditch. The cab of the truck was completely incinerated. One of the tankers seemed to have caught fire. Lieutenant Anita Smith from Pahrump Valley Fire and Rescue spoke to News 46 about this fatal accident. A tandem tanker. Uh, my understanding it was carrying gasoline and diesel. Uh, unless you have some other information, that's what the tanker was reportedly carrying. Uh, it did uh, go off the highway, off of 160, um, going northbound toward uh, 95. Uh, did lose control of it and went off the roadway and uh, did catch fire. We had um, a fatality actually in this accident. One occupant? That's correct. The driver, unfortunately, uh, was uh, deemed fatal into the accident, uh, and we were able to um, quickly put the fire out before it extended into the desert area. So the cab seemed to have caught fire in this accident, as well as the front portion of one of the tanker trucks. How did you guys contain that? Well, it appears there was a breach of the front tank. Uh, allowing some of those products to come out. So it was just a quick response, master stream, uh, to control the fire and to control the spread. Uh, you know, the quicker the, the response and the quicker the activity is, is obviously the better result. So is there a way to contain that type of fire when you have it actually, it, was it dripping out of the side of the tank or coming out of the top of the tank because it seemed to be on fire and didn't catch the rest of it? Uh, the State Air Patrol Office indicated that there was possibly a, a relief valve that did pop off. We're not really certain of that. We didn't get a chance to uh, actually inspect the vehicle. Because it is a fatality scene, we uh, tried to, to control that scene and um, respect their evidence. Uh, anyways, but that um, there probably was some leakage of some product. I don't know if it went onto the cab or not. Mm -hmm. It's not really sure, but quick response, heavy flows of, of water, and if we have to, we can always resort to foam. We did call all hands on deck, right? We did call all hands, uh, not just for the tanker fire, but the also take care of the uh, pending calls in the valley. And as well, Nye County Emergency Services responded, Nye County uh, Sheriff's Department and Nevada Highway Patrol? Uh, Nevada Highway Patrol, uh, I'm not sure about the Sheriff's Department. I didn't see them on scene, but we, um, we did respond with them and Nye County has met, yes. And as far as the removal of the tanker trucks, did you guys have some to do with that? And how, how do you remove a tanker truck out of an area? It wasn't kind of in a ditch. We're not responsible for removing the tanker truck, but what we want to do is just ensure that everybody, all the players on scene, mm -hmm. are safe at all times. So we usually provide manpower and an apparatus there. Mm -hmm. Just in case something were to happen, we'd be able to mitigate the emergency quickly. A heroic attempt was made to save the driver of that big rig truck at the accident site on northbound Highway 160. Videl Lopez spoke to News 46 about the traumatic, heartbreaking moments immediately following the accident. He and his co-workers attempted to save the victim. We're here at the home of Vidal Lopez, who was on scene at the fatal big rig accident. He wanted to speak about, about what happened at the accident and send his condolences to the family. We were coming home from work approximately about 3.30 mm -hmm. from Beatty. We seen a big dust cloud smoke right as, I, I don't know where that area is but with the curb is and we were all, the first time we were the first one there there wasn't very many people around so I and our co-workers we decided to stop mm -hmm. we ran down He was still in there. Was he conscious? The windows were closed. We tried, we threw some rocks in there 
me and my buddy Jimmy. You tried to throw rocks to break so the windows? Break some windows so because it was already, the motor was running already. So the cab was not on fire at this the time? The cab wasn't on fire at the time, but the motor was on fire. So one of us broke the window. He hung out the window. His body was hanging out the window. Was he conscious? He was still alive. I reached out, tried to pull him. I tried to pull him, but I couldn't pull him. So he, so you couldn't get him I out? I couldn't get him out. I couldn't get him out. We walked away. Three minutes later, probably, I don't know, the whole cab fell on top of him. The cab fell on top of him? Yeah, it was on fire. <laughs> I just would feel sorry for the family. I don't know. I just try my best to get them out. <laughs> How many of there were you trying to get him out? It was two other of us. So three of us total. <laughs> Me, Jimmy, Andrew. We tried, but we couldn't get him out. And I feel sorry for the family, okay? Another trucker stopped by. I guess he knew who he was. Oh, wow. Wow. And he said, and I hope, I hope it wasn't him. I don't know anybody else that his wife was pregnant. That the truck driver who passed away's wife was pregnant? Yes. That's what the driver said. Do you think he was local here to prom? I'm not sure where he was from. He said they've been having, doing a lot of work, working a lot of hours. I, I'm sorry, I just don't know what else to say. You wanted to speak up about this and send your condolences to the I family. Sure, I sure do. I will pray for my mom, the family, for the for their kids. I'm sorry that it, this had to happen. <laughs> you should not feel badly that you couldn't get him out. Um, I know that uh, that's weighing heavy on you, but you did your best. <laughs> I tried. I tried. That's all. I mean, I know how the family is going to be. And, and if he did have kids, he's in a better place right now. And pray to God that he's a... So he was a pretty young person? I didn't know how old he was because he was already starting to get burnt. I, I don't know what age he was. And, and if this, somebody lets me know how old he was, I, I would love to know, you know. And all of us at KPVM send our condolences to the family of this accident victim. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. Nevada Highway Patrol has issued a press release identifying the driver of a gas tanker truck who passed away after the vehicle crashed into a large ditch off Highway 160 in the town of Johnny on Tuesday afternoon. According to the report by Nevada Highway Patrol Trooper Jeremy Elliott, a 2007 Peterbilt tanker truck with a trailer tanker was traveling northbound on State Route 160 in the northbound travel lane. For unknown reasons, the truck traveled off the east shoulder and struck the guardrail. The truck and trailing unit went over the guardrail and down an east dirt embankment. The truck overturned and caught fire. The driver, Keith Andrew Prum, was seated in the cab of the truck and was engulfed by the flames. The driver, 44-year-old Keith Andrew Prum of Las Vegas, was pronounced dead on scene at 6.06 p.m. by Nye County Sheriff Deputy Coroner Investigator Richard Deutsch. This is Deanna O'Donnell for News 46. And firefighters responded to an early morning structure fire on Wednesday located on the corner of Murphy and Douglas Streets. Like this morning, we had a call out for a, a structure fire, double wide manufactured house uh, off of Douglas Street. And this came in at, as fully engulfed already? Yes, uh, deputies arrived on scene and reported that it was fully engulfed while we were already en route. Unoccupied? Unoccupied structure. Uh, our understanding 
is that it was vacant. However, the state fire marshal is currently investigating the fire. So he's been called in and uh, uh, how, how many engines do you know that we had on scene? It seemed like we had a lot of crews there. Uh, yeah, we had a typical um, structure fire response. So engines and tenders were doing water shuttle uh, to, provide a, to provide enough water to put the fire out. Uh, we used right around 10,000 gallons, which is um, about standard. An overhead master stream there. Yes, master stream gives us a quick ability to knock down the fire, keep it from spreading to other residences, and keep it to spread from spreading into the into the uh, wildland area. And this did not have any extensions at all to other homes, even though the Nye County sheriffs were talking about possibly evacuating. Correct. There was no extension to the home. Everything was contained to the property. And so we'll be looking at uh, perhaps how this started, the state fire marshal? He's investigating that currently. And we'll be back with more of News 46 Week in Review right after this.